All right, so problem number five will be a free body diagram, uh, either normal tangential, which is what this one is, but it definitely could be XY, could be translation. Uh, go back and look at those translation problems, especially, especially those problems that have two different centers of gravity, you know, and so when you're summing the moments, you can't get away from having that MAD term. Um, but uh, I think that we need more review for this this rotation, normal tangential, this rotation type of this problem. Uh, so <clears throat> we've got a pendulum uh, that has, and here's also an, an interesting one we haven't done before. It has a 10 kilogram slender rod right here, uh, but then also a 15 kilogram sphere. Uh, so it gave me two different masses, two different masses. Now. We've kind of talked about um, energy problems. If, if we have an energy problem that has two different masses, then, then I'm going to have two MGHs. I'm going to have two uh, one-half MV squareds. I'm going to have two one-half I omega squareds. Uh, but we haven't done one of these free body diagram problems. For the free body diagram problems, uh, I'm only going to have one free body diagram. But when I start summing the forces, I'm going to have two MAs on the right-hand side of my equation, okay? So that's how we do it. I'm going to have, when I sum the moments, I'm going to have um, two I alphas, okay? All right, so anyway, that, that's, that's what we're going to do. So let's keep them together as if it's one object. But I'm going to have two MAs on the right-hand side of my equation, two I alphas on the right-hand side of my equation. Okay, so here we go. Uh, the pendulum is subjected to a torque of 50 newton meters. It has an angular velocity of 3 radians per second when theta is equal to 45. All right. Determine the magnitude of the reactive forces pin O exerts on the pendulum at this instant. Now, uh, my first instinct is to do like an OY and OX. But thinking ahead, I think I'm going to probably be summing the forces in normal and summing the forces tangential. Uh, so many times it it's, it's makes more sense to break this O <clears throat> into like an O normal and an O tangential. Okay, so first of all, where is normal and tangential? Let, let me define my axes. Point G1 right here would have a tangential right here and a normal right here. Point G2, um, okay, also, right, the same tangential normal. Here, here are my axes right here. Normal and tangential. So let me call this O normal and O tangential. Okay. Um, I'm, I'm going to erase this right here since I've I, here, here are my axes up here. Okay, so the pin has an OX and OY, or an O tangential and an O normal. The rod has a weight, 10, 9.81, and the sphere has a weight, 15, 9.81. So is that a good free body diagram? Is that, are those, the, all the forces I've got acting, don't put anything else, um, don't put anything extra just the forces, right? Weights, and I've got a pin right there. I think that's it. And I've defined my axes. Define your axes according to the acceleration. What type of acceleration we're going to have? We're going to have, uh, you know, normal and tangential. So now, let us uh, sum the forces in the normal direction. That direction right there. All right, I've got O normal, and then I've got, uh, I need to break this into its components, break this into its components. Uh, we're lucky here that that's a 45 degree angle. Um, so, you know, that would be 45. We can't go wrong with 45, but if it wasn't 45, I'd have to be a lot more careful. Um, this would be the opposite of 45, which in this case it is 45. So I've got O normal in the normal direction. And then this, this component right here is not in the normal direction. Right? It's not in the normal direction. So this would be the weight, cosine 45, and then this one's weight, cosine 45, equals, all right, it equals mass times acceleration. What type of acceleration? A normal. What is a normal? It is V squared over R or R omega squared. 
all right? And because I have two different masses, I'm going to have two MAs. I'm going to have two MAs. I'm going to have MA of normal of G1 <coughs> and MA normal of G2. Let's call this G1, call this G2. All right. So, let's do this. All right, so we've got M of the slender rod, and then A normal of the slender rod is R omega squared. R is not necessarily the radius, but R is the distance away from the center of rotation. I can't emphasize that enough. In this class, those R's in R omega squared, R alpha, those R's are the distance from the center of rotation. So this is going to be 0.3 meters, 0.3. This omega, it told me in the problem statement, was 3. So this is going to be 0.33 squared. All right. Now, the ma for the other term The MA for the other term is going to be M is 15, and its R, omega squared, is not 0.1, not 0.1, not 0.1. This R is the distance from center of rotation. Where is center of rotation? Center of rotation is way over here. This is going to be 0 0.73 squared, 0 0.73 squared, okay? The, um, that, that was tough. That's why we're doing this problem, so I can throw something at you on the final exam. Maybe it has two separate masses. Um, and so for a normal tangential one that has two separate masses, just have two MAs. The MA for one mass, the MA for the other mass. All right, that equation only has one unknown. I can solve O normal 174.6 right here. Now let me solve... <clears throat> sum the forces in the tangential direction. What is tangential? Tangential is that way. So O tangential, but then also 10 times 9.81 sine 45 and 15, 9.81 sine 45 equals, <clears throat> so now I've got 2 MA M A. Now these are A tangentials, right, of G1 and G2. <clears throat> Let's think about that. Alright, this is going to be uh, the mass of the slender rod times R alpha. What is the R? R is the distance away from the center of rotation, 0.3. What is alpha? Alpha is, I, I don't know. Alpha is what I'm trying to solve for well, maybe it doesn't ask to solve for this. But this is alpha. All right, so this is alpha of bar OA or AB. OA and OB, they're stuck together. This is one pendulum, one rigid body, and so it only has one alpha. Remember, every rigid body will only have one alpha. You know, it doesn't have two different alphas. It only has one omega. You know, this, this says three radians per second. That's the omega for the sphere, for the slender rod, for the whole thing. Okay. Um, but then also the um, M times R alpha, and that's the same alpha. All right, I just said that's the same alpha right there for the, um, for the sphere. All right. This equation has two unknowns, so I can't solve for that right away. So let me start, go, go to summing the moments. Uh, now, if you sum the moments about G, so let's kind of review this. If we sum the moments about G, it's IG alpha. Sum the moments about a fixed point, it's I by that fixed point alpha. If we sum the moments about a different point, it's IG alpha plus MAD. This one has two masses, so actually if I sum the moments about G1, I am still going to have the MAD of G2, uh, but I think this one makes the most sense. We can sum the moments about a fixed point O. Let's sum the moments about a fixed point O, because then we don't have to worry about any MAD. If we sum the moments about a point that is not uh, accelerating, then we don't have to worry about MAD. If it's fixed, 
Don't have to worry about MAD. So I'm some of the moments about point O. Now clockwise or counterclockwise? Usually you can choose your own direction. You know, as long as the left hand side of your equation agrees with the right hand side of your equation, you can choose your own direction. Unless you have already sort of chosen that direction. I have already said that alpha leads to tangential acceleration. I have already defined my alpha that way. All right, so I'm about to reuse it in I alpha down here. So I, if I reuse something that I've already used, right? That's redundant, isn't it? But I've got to make sure the signs agree, make sure the direction agrees. So I am going to sum my moments clockwise. All right, I'm going to sum my moments clockwise because I've already used alpha, I've already defined alpha. So clockwise. Summing about point O. O M goes straight through it. O T goes straight through it. Uh, I've got that 50 um, before I forget. Then here I've got the weight. How do I want to uh, do the weight? I, I've already broken it up. That component goes straight through it. But this component, the um, 10, 9.81, sine 45, is acting a distance <coughs> of 0.3 away, creating a positive moment. Uh, the 15, 9.81, sine 45. Again, can't go wrong with 45 degrees. Um, it's acting 0.7 away, creating a positive moment. Equals, all right, so now I'm going to have the I alpha of the slender rod plus the I alpha of the sphere. Both of these are the I's, the moment of inertia about 0.0. All right, so for a slender rod, that's not too bad. I have an equation for the end. The I about the end of a slender rod is one-third ML squared. So that's I alpha. Now, the I of the sphere is a little bit harder. Somewhere on a formula sheet, if I give you a problem like this that has a sphere, the formula sheet, the I of the sphere... The I about the center of a sphere is two-fifths m r squared. Two-fifths m r squared. So two-fifths m 15 r point one squared. So that's the I just of the shape. That R, okay, is not the R to the center of rotation. That is the just for a sphere, the I about the center of a sphere. Uh, but I don't want the I about this point. I want the I about this point. How far do I need to move that I? I need to use a parallel axis theorem to move that I 0.7 meters. How do I use parallel axis theorem? Plus MD squared, right? I about <clears throat> a different point would be I plus MD squared. And this distance D is the distance you want to move. The distance, but perpendicular distance between those two I's, those two points. So I need to move it, an m d squared, and don't forget this alpha right here. <clears throat> All right. So there we go. We, we did it. <clears throat> this right here is um, <clears throat> has only one unknown. So I can solve for this. I've got alpha 16.7 radians per second squared. And then plug this back in up here. I've got O tangential is 51.8 newtons. Double check me on those answers. <clears throat> but let's go back and see what we did. We drew a free body diagram. We defined our axes with sum of the forces normal equals ma normal. Sum of the forces tangential equals ma tangential. And sum of the moments equals i alpha. This was tricky because there was two different masses. So we had two ma normals. We had two ma tangential. We had two i alphas. But other than that, it, you know, it, it was the same. Um, <clears throat> be careful here with your r omega squared and r alpha. That r is the distance to the center of rotation. So you can many times you can see that center of rotation right there. Um, and this i was i about point o. And then the last thing, just be careful the direction right here. Usually you can choose your own direction unless you've already used a variable before. If you've already used a variable before, make sure that your direction 
um, agrees with the direction for any of the equations you have used uh, you have used before. Okay. All right.